Ugh, I feel like you guys are going to be mad at me this week. I changed a number of tips before round 19 kicked off, and thankfully I did. I had a very good week on the track. So let's have a look. I got eight out of a possible correct nine tips, so let's go through them. So the only one I got wrong, which may be the case for some of you as well, was Essendon losing at the last minute to Adelaide. Um, great game of footy, but disappointed to get my tip wrong. I, of course, changed my tip from West Coast. What an idiot. I'm never tipping West Coast again, by the way, but the reason I changed it is because of Waterman, Yo, um, Duggan, and McGovern all missing, it, and we were already underdogs, and I was like, nah, screw that. GWS beating Gold Coast, you could predict that a mile off. I changed my tip from Collingwood to Hawthorne. I said that in the football come down. The more I looked at the game, the more I realized I had no reason to tip Collingwood, and thankfully, I did change that tip. Port beat Richmond. I did stick fat with the Bulldogs tip. There were people in the comments telling me I was wrong for that, and I got that massively right, so I'll take all the credit, uh, just like I cop all the shit when I get it wrong. Brisbane beating Sydney. That was a real 50-50 call, and the game played out that way. Fremantle beating Melbourne was predictable. Carlton were given a scare by North Melbourne, but ultimately got that tip right. So let's talk about all the weekly winners from this round. So we'll start off with our members tipping winner, and it is True Footy. Congrats, True Footy. I think this is the second time that I've ever won something. It was just the members tipping competition with less people, but I'll take it with eight correct tips. And uh, congratulations, Mr. True Footy. You get some beers tonight as your reward. General tipping winner is a two-way tie between A Brown, a Brown 21 and Mitch Gray with nine correct tips. I mean, the tip the crows, well done. And both got the margin just two off, which is very impressive. The members tipping leader is still real Swift with 111, that is very impressive. And the general tipping leader is Rambo21 with 116. I think that's a first time leader for the season so far. Rambo21, well done with 116. Tully Griffiths just commanding lead in this fantasy competition with 2109 as an average score. I feel like I'm, I'm creeping up the rankings in both. I'm making a real late season charge. I think I'm top third in the True Footy co tipping competition of about 1,200 people or something like that. But I am certainly not going to be winning any competitions this year. So let's get into round 20. So kicks off with a pretty good game, you'd think, at Marvel Stadium. Carlton coming off a short break. They played Sunday, didn't they? Uh, they were the last fixtured game. Now they're the first fixtured game of next week, albeit with no travel. So they take on Port Adelaide in seventh spot. Neither of these sides are in hugely convincing form, um, but Carlton are probably still, well, they're probably not the second best team in the comp, but they're, they're around the mark, right? They've had, well, they lost two in a row and then were challenged by North and probably just dug deep to win that game. And nonetheless, that's still, that's still good considering North played well. So that's positive. Port Adelaide, again, a, a pretty up and down team this year, challenged by Richmond for three quarters, still won a lot of the key stats, still kicked a lot of behinds, sort of typical of their season. The midfield sort of got going in this game, as you'd expect, against the depleted Richmond, who probably a little bit midfield talent depleted. Nonetheless, still, they got the win, uh, 41 points, and they're still seventh on the ladder with plenty to play for. Do we have any faith that they could knock off Carlton? I really don't, to be honest. Um, and maybe that is a little bit harsh, but I just don't have any trust with this current Port Adelaide team this year, which means I'll probably get it wrong. But I think you have to go with the home side here, the more fancied side. And I think they could win by 28 points. I think, uh, I feel like last year they belted Port Adelaide by about 50 points at, uh, I can't remember which ground that was, but let's say Carlton win this by 28 points. North Melbourne versus Geelong. Hmm, I feel like this fixture normally goes really badly for North Melbourne. However, I said in a recent video that this extended run of form from North Melbourne of being improved is the longest run of form that we've seen from them that has been compelling for many years now. And, and you know, 2023, they started the year well. I do remember that. 2022, I think they had a massive losing streak. Now, okay, they've only won two games in that stretch, but they have also played well in some losses against some good teams. Like, they nearly beat Collingwood. They were really, really good against Carlton, I thought. And that converges with the Geelong side that is unpredictable at the moment. Very unpredictable. And, you know, some poor games at GMHBA in particular, going down by eight goals to the Western Bulldogs this week. And, you know, typically I'd think this would go terribly for North Melbourne, but I'd, I think it, the gap has closed a little bit. Is it enough? Is it enough to tip an upset here? I think if North Melbourne do beat them, this would really signify the end of Geelong. I mean, I, I kind of think Geelong's in transition anyway, but it would really put a dagger in the heart of this season. Um, I don't think I'm going to tip it. I'm sorry, North fans. If you, if you had a history of playing better against Geelong... I would be more inclined to tip you. I don't think the gap is as big as it you know, was 12 months or 24 months ago, but I don't feel brave enough. So I will say this isn't a shellacking, but Geelong win by 32 points. It really depends which Geelong comes out. If 
The poor version of Geelong comes out, the North Melbourne could beat them. But uh, let's say 30 points. Oh dear, the Q clash. Is it even still called that anymore? I think it is. Gold Coast versus Brisbane. Gold Coast are undefeated at this ground this season, as we all know. That has been an incredible narrative this season. And this is, I'm going to say off the top of my head, by far the toughest challenge. Brisbane is uh, the form side of the competition right now, having just beat Sydney. I think Brisbane and Sydney are right up there. And uh, it's hard to separate those two. This is a huge challenge. Can uh, Gold Coast keep their season alive? I mean, they're hanging by a thread to begin with. And uh, we're quite weird. It was a weird game against GWS, to be honest. Like six goals, 14, more scoring shots, 19 more inside 50s. But the scoreline wasn't even close in the end. (sighs) Brisbane are in such hot form at the moment. It doesn't mean they won't drop a game. And Gold Coast are a different team at home. Oh, I haven't even decided who I'm going to tip. Like, sometimes I, I get a feel right before the video. I'm like, okay, this is the way it'll go. But I I could see an upset here. I could see an upset here. Brisbane are too good. I, nah, I'm tipping Brisbane. I'm tipping Brisbane. But I wouldn't be surprised if this is upset of the rounds because Gold Coast at home, they do play quite well. They're quite cohesive. But uh, they also beat Brisbane last year, right? So... There's a bit of form line and confidence behind that. Uh, let's say Brisbane by seven points. Oh boy, this could be a, this could be another upset, I reckon. St Kilda versus Essendon. St Kilda, far too good for a very poor West Coast last week. But in general, the stack of about six games, other than a bad game at Adelaide Oval, I think St Kilda has improved. And Essendon, I don't think they were poor against Adelaide. I think they were beaten by a hungrier side with some talent that has been inconsistent this year and surprise people by playing well. That's their second win at Marvel this year, I think. Adelaide, they beat Carlton there as well. So I'm not reading too much into that in terms of writing Essendon off. Essendon won this game early the year by about four points or something. It was a really close, low-scoring game. (sighs) Boy, boy, oh boy. I don't want to get sucked into the Essendon negativity because I don't agree with a lot that's been said out there. We have grown to not trust them, particularly late in the seasons. I don't think I'm there yet, though, and uh, I, I do want to give some Kilda, St. Kilda some credit, though. They could win this because I think they've been playing some good footy, and particularly their win over Sydney was very compelling. Oh, this is tricky. I think there could be an upset here. Both sets of fans think I hate them <laughs> and refuse to tip them, so I can't really win or lose here. My gut's kind of saying St. Kilda for some reason, but oh, boy. I'm going to go St. Kilda. I'm sorry, Essendon fans. I just had massive rant about how no one should write Essendon off. I'm actually making this tip more on Secure right now. I think, I think they're playing all right. I think they're playing all right. Seven points. Melbourne versus GWS. Oh, this is another tough game. This is another tough game. GWS obviously beat Gold Coast, like we said. Um, you know, I think beaten in some stats, like inside 50s, burned Gold Coast on transition, sort of played the way you expect GWS to play. Melbourne were pretty horrific against Fremantle, but they were missing Gorn and Petrarca, and that's where the game, where they got slaughtered. It wasn't just that, to be honest. Fremantle were far too good. But, yeah, I don't know about this one. I don't know about this one. So Melbourne, you know, they beat um, Essendon, and they beat West Coast, which is a huge win at the moment. They've been generally okay, and they're generally pretty poor against Fremantle, so I don't want to extrapolate on that too much. GW West, though, I, I just can't really trust them. Their last game at the MCG was only a fortnight ago, and they beat a plucky Richmond side. I think I'm going to tip Melbourne here. I think I'm going to tip Melbourne. I am not confident about it at all. This game is giving me some ick about it. Uh, GWS are good at the G, generally speaking, and I trust them slightly more. But both sides have been up and down this year. Oh. I'm going to say that this game hinges on the, the, the selection of Max Gorn. If Gorn plays, I'm tipping Melbourne. If his name is announced... I'm going to change my tip. So I'll say Melbourne by 15 points. Oh, God. Oh, God. I actually forgot this game was coming up. I legit forgot the Derby was going to be part of this video. Um, I think the best way to analyze this Derby is just to really focus on what happened last time and cling to that. (laughs) Um, Okay, so Fremantle have been in some really good form lately and capped that off with a really good win over the Ds. They were dominant, 47 clearances to 16. I know Melbourne are deficient in that area, like losing Petrarca and Gorn. But Fremantle are the best clearance side in the competition, and it was a dominant performance. And they're very well-rounded now. They've got good talls, Tracy and Amos. They've got good smalls, like Switkowski's having a great season. Their back line's sound. Midfield's outstanding. I think they're, I think they're the real deal and can, can certainly make top four. And West Coast is just at such a low ebb at the moment that, that I'm not even 
entertaining the idea of winning this game. I feel less positive about it than I was last time we played them, and we were still rank underdogs in that game. We did win it, and West Coast could get back McGovern, Waterman, and Yo, and that will that will help. But I've got a bad feeling about this game. I'm going to say Fremantle by. I honestly think it could be like 70 points. <sighs> that disgusts me. Collingwood versus Richmond. This one is, well, potentially a good game considering Collingwood have dropped, what, four on the bounce now? We're particularly poor against Hawthorne. Ooh, this might have some juice to it, I reckon. Collingwood's season is in tatters and there's a very negative vibe about the place at the moment. And they're an interesting point in their season where, you know, it'll be interesting to see to what extent they start exploring the list now that finals are realistically off the table. Um, yeah, it's been a bad stretch of form. And they haven't been horrendous. Like, the Hawthorne game was by far their worst game. But, you know, Geelong, they put up a fight. I also want to give Richmond some credit. So, Richmond, it, they're an interesting one. Like, you look at some key stats, particularly with the Port Adelaide game. They get smashed in clearances inside 50s. And yet, they stuck with them for three quarters. There's a real spirit to Richmond at the moment. And I want to give them some credit. I, I give them credit all year. I realize that. But I don't want to dismiss this game out of hand and say that they are no chance of winning. For an 18th place side, they are more plucky than, say, the 16th place side at the moment. And uh, we saw North Melbourne really challenge Collingwood a few weeks ago. And that looked like a flash in the pan, and we've seen Collingwood decline since then. Uh, I'll, I'll say Richmond are very capable of putting up a fight, but surely Collingwood don't drop this. Surely they don't. I'll say 30 points conservatively. Sydney and the Western Bulldogs. This is a convergence of two pretty good teams at the moment. I haven't done my power rankings yet this week, but I think the Bulldogs will feature close to the top five, if not in it. Sydney were very gallant in defeat and could have easily won that game against the Brisbane Lions, and that is the arguably the toughest ask in football right now, is to go up at the Gabba and play well. And uh, they did that, and it hasn't been the best run of five games. I think they've lost three out of the last four, maybe three of the last five. Um, but they're still like losing narrowly. Like They've lost one point, Two points and two points, or you know, it might even be one, one, and two. So they're just getting pipped in a few of these games, but nonetheless, I don't think the wheels have fallen off by any stretch. I don't think it's a big deal at all. And they will be a very tough ask at the SCG. On the other hand, the Bulldogs have been in great form and were outstanding and dominant against the Cats at GMHBA, which, you know, historically has not been an easy task, although it's becoming increasingly easy this year. But I think the run of form from the Bulldogs in general has been pretty good. They've claimed some scalps. They've beaten Collingwood when Collingwood were playing well. They smashed Fremantle. They smashed Geelong. That loss against Hawthorne, which everyone really reacted to, which is understandable at the time, doesn't look so bad now. They also beat the Giants away in Sydney. Like They've put in some really compelling form. You look at the percentage, 117.7. This is winnable. This is winnable for the dogs. I am going to tip Sydney because I just don't think they'll lose again. I think their slump in form has come and they've, they've lost four games for the season now. I think they will just dig deep and win this game, but I think the Bulldogs are a seriously good team right now and will give them some headaches. So I'll say eight points, Sydney. Next, we've got the Adelaide Crows and Hawthorne. This is another tricky game because Adelaide have improved. So there's a lot of buzz about Hawthorne right now, and rightfully so. Smash Collingwood and generally have just, what are they on, eight of their last nine? Looking like one of the best teams in the competition on current form, and it's bizarre to me that they sit 12th, but that is the nature of this season. Adelaide, on the other hand, though, were very good against Essendon and, you know, beat St Kilda quite well the week before that. And there's just a big gap between their best and the worst at the moment. But overall, they're looking a little bit better. I think they comfortably look better than 15th position on the ladder right now. So I don't think this will be a simple game. Hawthorne have gone to this ground once this year and nearly beat Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide's best and worst also has a massive gap. So that's a little hard to correlate other than, this, other than to suggest that Hawthorne aren't bad at this ground. On form lines, you've got to favour Hawthorne. And if you assume that they don't play this ground badly, you should have them as favourites in this game. But Adelaide at home, it's given me something to think about. This is a tough round. This is a tough round. I, I will tip the Hawks. Um, I will tip the Hawks, but I'm expecting a pretty good game. Let's say 10 points. And that concludes the round. Um, so as we look at the ladder, we've got Fremantle up into third. Brisbane... Did I tip Gold Coast to beat Brisbane? No, I didn't. I tipped Brisbane to win, didn't I? I think it's just percentage. Oh, yeah, Fremantle winning the Derby massively. <laughs> we'll, we'll tip the percentage that way. Geelong, assuming they beat North Melbourne, will be in fifth. GWS in sixth with Melbourne in eighth, assuming that they beat GWS with Max Gorn. Now, Hawthorne's up into ninth. That's the highest I've seen them this year. 
Essendon down to 10th. So that one's a bit of a roughie. I think Essendon should win. I, I just have a gut feel about St. Kilda. And before I cop any shit about my gut feel, I'm in the top third of the tipping competition, bro. Um, no, but seriously, I, I, don't, I don't know about that one. That one's tricky. I just wanted to tip St. Kilda on a, to give them some credit at the moment. The Bulldogs in 11th. Unlucky to play Sydney this week. I think they're better than that. Collingwood in 12th, assuming they beat Richmond. Other than that, it's taking on a very familiar tone. I really do think that bottom three is going to change over the course of the next few weeks. I think North Melbourne play Richmond and West Coast coming up. So they should at least leapfrog West Coast. But for now, let me know in the comments what you think of this round. That was a tough round. That was actually tougher than I than I thought it was going to be. And we have some good games coming up. So looking forward to that. I will be streaming the Western Derby on the True Footy YouTube channel. Uh, I'll be making Eagles content over at True Eagle. And Drewsy and I should do a derby preview on True Footy this week as well, um, which is going to go real well. But for now, thank you for watching. Thank you for being subscribed. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.